This is episode 13 of Give Me a Chance, and it is your host of speaking, Vittoria. Hi everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Give Me a Chance. If you look outside, it is already springtime, so let's put our coats off, volume up, and let's get started with this episode. Devesh is joining me on the episode of today and he's gonna share with us how he got the chance to change his life. By setting small steps and being extremely consistent, Devesh overcome all the struggles that he had with obesity and social anxiety in his teenager years in a mind-blowing manner. It is time to listen to Devesh's story. Hi Devesh, welcome to Give Me a Chance. Good morning on my end, I think it's like evening where you're at right now. Good afternoon on my end. It's uh... <laughs> It's uh, almost five o'clock over here. Do you have any plans for uh, for today or the weekend starts off? So, yeah, I mean, like just uh, go see a couple of friends the weekend. I mean, there's mostly a lockdown here, so you, you can only, I guess, you gotta have like a social bubble of like three or four people, um, but you can't really go above that. Um, that's our lives, I guess, at this point, you know. Yeah, and how is it going with uh, your podcast? Yeah. yeah, definitely. So my podcast is called Progressaholic. Just a little bit of context, I guess. Uh, the main idea is that we hire stories of individuals mm-hmm. dedicated to the progress of self and society. So self being your internal work. That's like your personal development, your personal growth. Society being social impact. So sort of um, looking at how we can develop societies around us. And yeah, the podcast has been going really good. I actually took a... I've been doing it for about a year. Took, mm-hmm. us, took a one-month break in January because uh, I had some other stuff going on. And then actually just posted, uh, just started posting uh, yes, from yesterday again. I think we're going to go a little bit later uh, into your podcast because it's really interesting what you're doing. But tell us a little bit more about yourself. So uh, where do you come from? How did you grow up? Uh, and indeed, how did you get later on the chance to change your life? Currently, I'm situated at the time of recording in Canada in a place called London. Mm-hmm. It's like a smaller, less nice London not the actual London in the UK. Um, and basically was born and brought up in Dubai, actually. Um, my family's still over there and I lived there for the first 18 years of my life before being in Canada for the last four years. Um, and I guess for me, I guess one thing that I saw in my childhood was at least for the first 16 years of my childhood, um, was, I was I was a person that was very fear-based, like very fear-based. You know, especially, I would say, from a social point of view, per se. Um, grew up with severe social anxiety. Ooh. Couldn't really speak to people. Uh, having this conversation, for example, with you right now would be like, oh, my God, I'd be like shaking or like whatever, you know. Anyone, you know, anyone, like anyone that I would speak to, even if I was at a grocery store, you know, speaking to the cashier, I couldn't even strike up a conversation with the cashier, for example. Like, it was that bad. I always have that when you grew up or is it something that... Uh, came up when you were a teenager? I guess I grew up with it, sort of. I was a pretty shy person overall. And then it just started to get worse and worse, I guess, until I was 16. Plus, I was obese at that point. So that was another part. Because when your physical health is not in track, your mental health, like, they're kind of related, you know? It's kind of like a circle, exactly. Yeah, circle. exactly. And it follows upon. So, it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm really yeah, surprised and- because I'm looking at you and you're totally a different person than what you're describing. That's- yeah, like it was, it was, it was crazy. Like, I mean, I feel like I, it was a different life. It was like, I'm like now living a different life, you know, it was like two like separate lives that I'm kind of living. Um, when I look back at who I was when I was 16, 15, you know, I'm like, that was a different person completely, you know, it's like I, I destroyed that body. Then I moved to a new body, basically. It must've been really tough. How, how did you relate to people at all? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, you must've been uh, really self-conscious. I can imagine. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think it was it was a bunch of different factors. It was that the fact that I was pretty, I guess, yeah, as you said, low self confidence. That was one thing, and then also low self esteem. Um, also, like you're constantly worried about what people think about you. That's another thing. That's it's very common. I we still have that today. I'm not perfect. I still have that today. But yeah, exactly. But the thing was that I asked myself. I remember when I was about 16, and um, I was going to bed. This there was a day that I was going to bed basically, and I asked myself. I was like. I'm sort of, I was seeing sort of my life trajectory at that point, like where I was going in life, you know? And I thought I was like, whether I'm 16 or 60, if this is the way I'm going to live my life, there's no point in really living. Like, it's it, it's kind of like, like, it's all going downhill from here. And I guess when you're at rock bottom, there's only one way and that's like going up. 
So then I asked myself, I was like, okay, fine. I got to figure like my physical health, mental health, not the best social anxiety. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm like, let's try to fix one thing at a time. So first went with the physical health. I was like, I gotta like change my physical health completely. Cause the, actually the thing is, is that in my family on my dad's side, yeah. um, his dad, him, his dad and his grandfather all had diabetes. So it's like a line of diabetes going on. And on my mother's side, they've had like other issues, like ailments, like knee issues and all that kind of stuff. And at the age of 16, I was starting to have like some like knee issues. And I was like, if this is the way I'm gonna, I guess, go um, with my family's health history, you know, it's it's not gonna work too well. Basically decided to like change everything around, cut out all the junk food in my life um, and decided to like start working out like crazy. So I used to go kickboxing, play tennis, um, like sh- like running, cardio, everything. Um, and I would just like work out like crazy for like six days a week. And over a year and a half, I lost about 70 pounds, which is, I think, 27 k- k- kilos, I think. 27 sure. kilos, that's crazy. Yeah, for, for us, it's kilos, but it's really impressive. You just did it on your own without, did anybody help you with that? No, 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 there was no there was someone to help me out. Like, it was just that, like, I was, uh, also, also when you're, like, extremely obese, like, it's, it's easier to lose the weight, I guess, because, like, I wasn't doing any physical activity before. And then I just went crazy. I would like do like twice a week tennis, four times a week kickboxing, and then five times a week I would do some sort of running. So uh, no, how did you keep yourself accountable? Um, I mean, I mean, I asked myself. I was like, okay, so I, I just sort of like pictured it. I was like, what paths am I going to go down? So now I'm 16, and that's fine, whatever. But how will I look like when I'm 25? How will I look like when I'm 35? If I continue to sort of be the way that I am. And also it was a bit selfish. I thought that if I lose the weight, I'll look better. And then my self-esteem will also improve. Was it the chance for you to change your life? Just that one trigger? Uh, Because uh, as you said, it must be one moment in which you you realized, this is it. I need to change. Yeah. yeah. And I think it it was that night. It was that night that I talked about where I was like going to bed and I was literally like kind of like just tearing up. Like I was always like, I was like breaking down and I was like tearing up and I was like, what the hell am I doing with my life? Like, this is the way I'm going to live. And maybe it was good that I had the realization at 16 and not at like 75, 80. But it's so, so brave that you had this realization and you really confronted it when you were 16 because not so many people want to confront the situation. How, yeah. Um, did you look up to anybody in particular for doing that? I mean, there was always like role models in my life um, for different, different aspects. Um, there were like friends of mine that, for example, that I also see, they were like super social. And I was like, social life wise, I would love to be like that. There are people fitness wise that were like super great and all that. I think there were people in my life, definitely. Um, also, I think my family was pretty supportive throughout the entire experience. They've never like I, I had a great family and they were supportive throughout whatever decisions that I made. And as you said, you did. You started off from your physical appearance. So yeah. day by day, you had a plan, you set it out. What about, you said that you had also struggled with social anxiety. Anxiety. So was that the second step that you needed to take? What did you do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So for that, what I did was I decided, so as I started to lose the weight, uh, little by little, the first couple of months. So I started seeing results there, started feeling better. And I was like, okay, socially, let's see what I can do. One thing was that uh, to break this pattern, I need to speak to more people or just have more conversations because I wasn't having any conversations for me to really get out of my comfort zone and put in the reps, you know? So one way that I decided to do that was to speak to new people as much as I could every single day. Um, And this could be super simple stuff, nothing too crazy where I'm at the grocery store and I strike up a conversation with the cashier. I'm at the mall, I'm going to buy something and I strike up a conversation with the person there. Since I started, it's been about, I think five years at this point. And uh, I've met maybe over 1,300 to 1,400 people at this point. Oh just in the last like five years that's crazy that's fantastic and uh, how did you how did you go about it in the first months because that's that's such a major transition so the first couple of months were like super awkward um but it was like a very fast learning curve so it's like you, you talk to people you realize okay wait, this didn't work so how can i get better at this how can i do this how can i do that um and then after a while i just and, and then the funniest thing is that now when people come up to me they're like 
dude, you're so extroverted. You're such a natural at talking to people. And I'm just like, if only you had seen the hard work before. Indeed, if you look at all these steps that you've taken, I mean, you, it was pretty tough, I can imagine. It, it's, it's really true. And I think well, the, 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 the interesting thing about it is though that as you get better and better, so for example, my social life got better, my physical life got better, my mental life got better. There were so chances of me staying within my comfort zone. Like I can still like stay in my comfort zone, but it's like, how do you constantly push yourself out? And that's like through figuring out new and new ways to like try out new things. One way is a podcast. How did the podcast idea ca- come to you? Like I was super interested in social impact and my own journey with personal development, uh, you know, with growing myself physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, you know, all those different social, socially, all those different aspects. Um, I wanted to maybe have conversations with people that have also gone through their own journeys and are successful mm-hmm. within their fields. That's where the idea of Progressaholic came up. We are constantly trying to get better. I mean, that's what helped me out at least when, when I was trying to, you know, go through my own life. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, the idea came up, decided to go in with it. Uh, I was like, I remember at that point, another, another very self-limiting doubt that came up was, I'm a 20-year-old university student who would want to speak to me. When like the people that I was speaking to, they were like yeah. 30 plus, 40 plus, they were successful in their fields. And I was like, I'm just a 20 year old university student. So you, f- you have that like limiting, self-limiting doubt where you're just like, why would anyone want to speak to me? Um, luckily though, I met a few people in the podcasting journey in the starting who put their faith in me. And then that kind of like snowballed and it got better and better. And then I just kind of like, you know, like gained the confidence to continue doing it. And then here we are like a hundred and six episodes in I think. Great. And uh, which kind of topics, uh, topics do you uh, do you talk to about? Yes, yeah, so we speak about personal development. Uh, mm-hmm. That's more on the self side. So growing yourself as an individual. Yeah. But then we also speak about social impact, which is like, how do we how do we make our communities better? Uh, and these can be topics such as like super basic stuff, such as like, how do you, you know, like, how do we reduce the poverty levels? How do we, you know, work on climate change, for example, some of those yeah. bigger, bigger themes around the world. And then also on like the micro level, how do we make sure that Devesh or Vit becomes a better person, you know? So it's like looking at a micro level and then looking at a macro level as well. Just to round this all off, uh, you have been through different struggles, but you came out uh, as a new you. And that is really, really impressive and inspirational. And um, if you look back at these times, uh, what is the toughest moment that you went through and how, what tips do you have for somebody that went through the same thing and yeah. that is struggling with that? Yeah, I think for me, when I, when I hit rock bottom, I think that was my toughest moment when I was 16. And at that point, when I was like, what am I doing with my life? Uh, yeah. And I think one thing over there was that realizing that when you're at rock bottom, there's only one way and that's up. That's one thing to realize. And I think that was super important for me to realize at that point. Another thing that was really important was daily habits. Now, when there's a big problem that you're looking at so for example i'm looking at the fact that i need to lose like 20 20 20 kilos or for example yeah so like, it looks very daunting like it looks very big and it looks like it's never going to happen and the issue is that we, we we look at the goal as like a big thing and we think that it makes an like unbelievable change and like you know like really like you go crazy but what really helps you out the most is having like 1% improvements and daily habits. And that's what, uh, like, I mean, there's that book by James Clear. It's called Atomic Habits. Mm-hmm. Great book. Would definitely recommend reading it. But the idea is that your habits are what make or break you. I think it's really a great tip to make it granular and to make it approachable. And I think many people would really be inspired by your story and how you approached your own yeah. situation of change. So, yeah. and, and for anyone that's listening, so a super quick one, but for anyone that's listening and like, for example, if you, if, if you maybe have social anxiety or you're shy and you want to mm-hmm. get out of it, and you're stuck in a pandemic. Um, like one thing is start a podcast. You get to speak to new people. True. If that's something, something that's something you don't want to do. Like literally like reach out to people on LinkedIn. A lot of people on LinkedIn are very willing to have a conversation. And I really hope that people get in, uh, inspired by your story, Devesh. Okay. Thanks for thanks very much uh, Thank so for much. being on. This was Devesh's story. After struggling for many years as a teenager with 
social anxiety and obesity, the Vesh decided that it was time to make a change. In this way, he got the chance to change his life and by taking small steps in a very consistent way, he managed to become a new person and start his life anew. And now Dvesh is the founder of Progressaholic and he has a podcast in which he talks about matters such as self and society with other entrepreneurs like him. With this, we come to the end of this episode. Have you ever had the chance to change your life or do you know anybody who has? Please get in contact with us and leave a comment here below. And if you have enjoyed this episode, do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel and see you next time. Give me a chance on your screen and in your ears.